So whenever I tell this statement, programming mechanical engineering systems, immediately students ask, what is the point? Why do I need to learn that? Well, the answer is right here. Just searching on MATLAB and mechanical, look at the number of opportunities you have and look at the job description. These are like core R&D oriented jobs. So Bosch, um, some local companies, some very good companies like FL Smith, Airbus, all of them require a lot of knowledge. So for example, here you can see that in Airbus in ba Bangalore, you see that there are opportunities where they require MATLAB and Simulink, right? Ex knowledge and experience in simulation and modeling. Now you need to understand that in four years, you're not being trained at all on this, right? So, so if you're still in your second year, you still have time. So start learning MATLAB because even if you look at the salary ranges in general, the, the, the minimum salary that you're looking at is 4.6 lakhs. Now, I'm not saying that just because you are learning MATLAB and you're able to write a simple program, you can get it. What I'm trying to say is if you're not even doing that, then you can just forget about working in these companies, right? So I'm pretty sure many of you are passionate about working in top companies like this. What I'm saying is that you need to be very good simulation engineers or modeling engineers so that you can take the idea that you have in your head, convert it into programs and get the results. If you're able to do that, getting a job in these type of companies is not at all hard. All right, so moving forward, how did I do this? Well, it's very simple. So you can see that I'm starting with, okay, so there is a question from Ramana Shiva. He's basically telling me that, hey, please tell me about the plot program one more time. Absolutely, Ramana. So, so for example, if you have two data sets, so let me just clear all close and CLC, right? So this is basically deleting all the things that I've created so far. So let us just go back to the density example, right? I'm going to create an array for density. So I'll say that density goes from, uh, uh, it starts from zero or sorry, it starts from one, goes up to 50 and there's 10 values, right? So this is my density array. Again, I'm using an error, uh, I'm using an array generator, makes my life extremely easy. And then if I'm, if I'm computing, uh, volume using a random number generator. I can just say random one comma 10. And if I put the semicolon at the end, the output doesn't get printed. So for example, if I take the semicolon, the output is getting printed. If I add a semicolon, the output is suppressed. The value is still being calculated. All right, so what is mass? Mass is nothing but density, dot star, volume, right? We have already looked at this formula. So now I've computed mass. So let us say I want to plot how mass changes with respect to volume. I can just do plot. My x-axis is going to be volume and y-axis y-axis is going to be mass. That's it. The plot looks crazy because you're using random values for volume, right? You're not using straight, like you're not using linear values. So this is how it looks like. And then what I can do is I can just add a line with parameter. And the reason why I did that is to just make is to just make the plot look a bit more better. Okay, so Ramana, I hope this makes sense. All right, so let let's go back. So what I've done is I've created state variables. You know, so this right here is what you call as a variable in computer program. Now in C, you have you might have have to declare the data type: integer, float, character, boolean. Don't worry about that. Mat, uh, MATLAB will figure it out automatically based on the value. So these are the things that makes your life easy, but as a result, MATLAB is a bit slow. Okay, so you used linspace and rand. Okay, Naveen, can you complete your question? And then what I'm doing is, I'm actually taking the engine geometric parameters, all right? The engine geometric parameters, like the bore, stroke, connecting rodlet, and, and compression ratio. Now this is a key difference. When you, when you studied auto cycle, you are most likely not taking into account these parameters at all. People directly provide you the volume at state one and the compression ratio. The reason why you start with all these parameters is that is how you work in uh, the industry. In the industry, that, that those are the values that you know and you have to work from that. Okay. And then based on that, I calculate my swept volume, my clearance volume, and then I look at my V1 and then calculate my V2, right? Very straight. It is very similar to solving this problem using pen and paper up to this point. And then what I'm doing is I'm using some relations, thermodynamic relations to calculate my second state variables, third state variables and all that stuff. Again, I'm just skipping a lot of detail because 
in order for me to explain this, you know, it will take me like 45 minutes to just explain this program and I don't want to do that. So if I, if I go down, I'm just plotting all the plotting all the uh, state points and then I'm connecting the state points, which I'll talk to you about separately. And then that's basically it. So when I run this, I immediately get my PV diagram. What's the advantage of doing this? Well, if you have a program like this, then what you can do is, if I ask you a question like, what happens when you change the compression ratio? How does the PV diagram change? Well, you don't have to guess. You can just run the program and then you can tell me what happens. This is very, very cool. All right, similarly, if you're talking about temperature change, I'm saying that after combustion, the maximum temperature change is 2800. What happens if it's just 2500? How does the PV diagram look? Well, you can see that it's becoming narrower, right? Because the work done is getting reduced. So there's not a lot of difference. The area is getting reduced, right? So these type of observations and these type of research is something that you need to carry on your own at an undergraduate level. I'm talking, if you're in second year, you need to be looking at this. Okay, looks like we have a couple of questions. Uh, first is the difference between lint space and random. Sure. So lint space is used to create an array between a starting number and an ending number and the number of values that you want. So between zero and one, if I want three values, it's going to be zero, 0 0.5 and one. That is what lint space creates. And similarly, if you want to create, uh, if you want to sh if you use the random number generator, it will create three numbers, but all the numbers are chosen randomly. So this is basically ordered. It has a logic, it has a progression, but this one, it does not. It's randomly generated. So that's the difference. Deepesh. Um, what is the question? So let us see. The question is, can you do 3D plots? Yes, absolutely. So for example, let us say that I create a random array, A equal to rand of uh, maybe 20 random values, 20 by 20. And then I'm just going to multiply this by 10 so that my random numbers are between zero and 10, right? And then what I can do is uh, I can do something called as a surface plot. So surf of A, you just wait for some time and almost immediately you get a 3D plot. You can rotate it, just look around the data. That's pretty cool. It's very, very powerful. Doing this using C or C program, C++ will take a lot of time. So Ramana Shiva, uh, how, how can we solve partial differential equations? Well, I'm glad that you asked because that is what I'm going to be talking about next. Thank you.